Okay, so while next speaker is going, uh, we're going to hear now from Christopher, oh my gosh, Jelesniaski. Jelesniaski. I faked a Russian accent. I don't know if that's even true. Polish. Uh, Polish. All right, so protect the system call, protect most of the world with Bastion. Um, and uh, recently graduated and, and joining Texas as well from Arlington, working on compilers. Uh, go ahead and take it away. Thank you. All right, so thank you for the introduction. So this work regarding uh, system call protection is done jointly with my colleagues, Mohanad Ismail, Dr. Jang, Dr. Williams, and my advisor, Dr. Cheng Wu Min. So the takeaways I want you to leave with here today is that system calls are important and should be treated as such. However, that's not the case. So system calls are important because they are the core API interface between processes and the operating system to get important functions done like uh, file I.O., communicating with hardware and networking. However, at the same time, system call can be a prevalent medium for code reuse attacks to compromise and take over an entire system. So we see that there is some rudimentary safeguards in place for system calls, notably Linux Secure Computing, also known as SecComp, and other works in this vein of system call filtering that are all coarse grain. So with that, I'd like to introduce the concept of system call integrity, a fine-grained and specialized uh, defense mechanism that wants to add more security around system calls in order to better protect the system. And no, better protect the system and not necessarily the correctness of the application. So to give a little bit more background on code reuse attacks, they're exactly what they sound like. They're reusing chunks of code to, um, reusing chunks of code to come up with their attack and eventually uh, uh, go and execute a system call. So this is possible because, system, uh, because memory vulnerabilities continue to exist in modern day code bases. So with a memory vulnerability, the attacker can set up their attack, and with a system call, the attacker can essentially leave the scope of the process and take over the underlying system. So note that while there's over 350 system calls available in Linux, only a handful are commonly sought after by attackers. So in terms of what exists to defend against system call abuse, uh, we, as I mentioned earlier, Linux Linux Secure Computing is a coarse-grained, uh, deployed, allowless, denialist mechanism that forces the developer to manually derive and specify themselves which system calls need, are allowed to be called and not allowed to be called during execution. So other literature is basically just trying to solve this problem and make the process more streamlined and easier for a developer to le leverage SecCom. Other works are just trying to focus and further kind of narrow down the minimal set of system calls. However, the bottom line is that all these defenses are still coarse grain. So this is not sufficient, especially because some system calls can't be disabled regardless, because they're necessary for core pro process functionality, like setting up a new process with exec v or mapping in dynamic libraries with mprotect and mmap. So the aim of wor this work is to instead change the focus from finding the minimal system call set to instead find meaningful context close and around system calls to protect the, better protect the overall system. So that brings us to the introduction of our work, system call integrity. So system call integrity is comprised of three individual contexts. So these contexts originate from our observation of how attackers are trying to abuse system calls. So these contexts are trying to answer and prevent and ensure legitimate use of how system calls are being invoked how system calls are being reached by the attacker, and what's being passed to system calls by the attacker. So now I'll go into detail of each context individually and using, using the example on the right. So the first context, call type context, the, the guarantee here is that only permitted system calls are allowed to be called in their expected manner. So note that this context is assigned per system call and not per call site as is done in similar works. So for this context, we've come up with three different labels, and they're mostly self-explanatory. So it's not callable, directly callable, and indirectly callable. So the caveat here is that not callable, we can apply to across all system calls, whether they're security sensitive or not. We reserve the latter two labels to only focus on security sensitive system calls. So in the example here, we have MMAP, and you know, uh, if we're going to do analysis, we see that MMAP should be labeled as a directly callable uh, system call, whereas mprotect is nowhere to be found, so it should be not callable. So note that we also did a heuristic study of modern day applications, and we saw that sensitive system call use is sparse in practice, and when they are invoked, or when they are used, they are rarely invoked indirectly. So that kind of goes nicely along with the call type context. 
So next we have the control flow context. The guarantee here is that a sensitive system call is reached and invoked only through legitimate control flow paths during runtime. So what this context is trying to accomplish is, set, is make associations between callers and callees and use that metadata to, to ensure correct control flow during runtime. So again, this context is best effort. And from our heuristic study, we see that in practice, call chains of sensitive, si sensitive system calls is usually actually short. Last but not least, we have the argument integrity context. So the guarantee here is that a sensitive system call can only use valid arguments when being invoked. And this has to be true even in the presence of memory corruption vulnerabilities in the untrusted application. So this context is able to handle all the different argument types like constants, global variables, local variables, and caller parameters that beyond, go beyond the scope of the caller function. So again, from our heuristic study, we see that the call depth to set system call arguments is fairly ha shallow, happening in the very same function where the system call is invoked or only a few functions away. So that covers the context that make up system call integrity. This work also implemented system call, integ system call integrity in the defense we named Bastion. So Bastion is comprised of a compiler and monitor component where the compiler is responsible for performing static analysis and gathering metadata and Correspondingly, the runtime monitor then uses and leverages that, runtime, that metadata that was collected to perform dynamic context checking. So we use SecComp to actually hook and check the, whenever a system call, a sensitive security sensitive system call is trying to be invoked by the application. So a little bit more detail about the implementation of Bastion. For the compiler, we had to implement a small API library that would help us tr do tracking for dynamic variables. Additionally, we had a kind of setter function to help us better, to, easy, to easily let the monitor grab the expected values from our scratch area when it comes time to do dynamic context checking. So from the monitor side of our implementation, the monitor's goal is to basically act as a liaison between the application and the operating system to safeguard system calls from the arbitrary use in the untrusted application. So note that we designed the monitor to be a separate process. And what this does is it isolates Bastion from the untrusted application. And this means that the attacker cannot bypass or disable our defense when to do th that does dynamic context checking. Additionally, the monitor only performs the context checking when the system call is attempted to be invoked by the application. So there's no checks along the way, there's only updates of the dynamic variables if there are any along the way. So on the bottom left, you see just the, uh, a picture that gives you a little bit of a insight of what the inner workings of the monitor looks like. So on the right, I'll just give you a quick run through of what the check procedure go, uh, looks like for the uh, ch dynamic context checking. So we have the monitor and it has an untrusted application. The monitor will attach itself to the untrusted application and when the untrusted application attempts to invoke a sensitive system, on a sensitive system call such as MLAP, the monitor will step in the way and say, oh wait, you can't do that. Let me check your process state and make sure that all the contexts are legitimate and make sense. So it'll grab the process state information from the user, from the user application. It'll compare that against the metadata that we collected from the compiler analysis. And if everything is all right, it'll re let the invocation go through and return, uh, run, let the application continue running. So for this implementation, we use the LLVM compiler and implemented this uh, prototype on Linux. And then recall that I was mentioning the difference between arbitrary system calls and security sensitive system calls. So we focused on four major categories of code reuse attacks. Please see the paper for more details on that. So regarding the evaluation of system call integrity in Bastion, for the performance we want to test against uh, heavy, system call, uh, heavy system call applications like Nginx, which is the most widely deployed web server. And then from the security front, we did a 32 attack study that is comprised of various ROP payloads, real world CVEs, and synthesized attacks that are from the security literature. So the evaluation questions here that we want to answer is, how does each individual context look like, the performance impact, and how does Bastion's overall performance look like? And then in terms of security, how does Bastion stack up against these various attack scenarios? So for the performance, we added, we incrementally added each context and we see that in the worst case, we're getting a 2.01% overhead. And then the other thing I wanna note here is that um, the argument integrity context is our most expensive context and that makes sense because it's the most heavy lifter uh, caring about and you know checking the dynamic variables and the number of variables as a check, et cetera. So it makes sense in terms of our uh, breakdown. 
Regarding security analysis, we took that, those 32 attacks and categorized them into three major groups. So first is return-oriented programming. So on the right, we see how, whether each context can address this. And we see that uh, as soon as a ROP attack tries to perform a stack pivot, the control flow context can pick up on this inconsistency and see that a system call is being invoked incorrectly. Um, regarding direct system call manipulation, so these are naive attacks that are just trying to hijack corruptible code pointers and point them to a sensitive system call. So again, recall that from the insight we had, most system calls are never called indirectly. So again, here the call type context can easily detect that. And last but not least, we have the indirect system call manipulation. So these are various attack methodologies that are trying to mimic program behavior as close as possible to mimic valid program behavior. So regardless of the approach that the attack takes, we see that the argument integrity context is able to hold the, hold the front and hold the line and protect the overall system from being hijacked. So, and that's because all the attacks, regardless of their kind of methodology, at the end of the day, they still need to change the arguments in order to carry out the, and complete their attack. So in conclusion, system calls are, are core infrastructure that, that we really need to care about and protect adequately. So for that, if I've introduced the concept of system call integrity, which hardens system calls by applying three specialized contexts to them. And looking towards the future, we feel that the prototype we've made of Bastion is a great stepping stone to enable configurable system call protection with, uh, with Bastion being able to be extended to add new contexts as research further develops in this direction or new attacks evolve that you know, are targeting system calls. So thank you for your attention. I, I look forward to your question.